What's up, everybody? My name is Joe Brown, and this is Heresy Financial. I've got an article up on the screen from Bloomberg uh, titled, The World's Biggest Pension Fund Cuts Its U.S. Bond Weighting by a Record Amount. And so we're going to talk about this. It's Japan, spoiler alert. So we're going to talk about this and what that means and why cutting treasuries is the precursor uh, or uh, just one step in the total path of the, the world de-dollarizing and dumping dollars. Ready? Let's dive in. I'm not kidding you. I literally just sat here and went through this entire video. Uh, I forgot to press record. So this is my second time talking about this article and talking about the world de-dollarizing. So if it sounds like I've said all these things already, it's because I have. You just, uh, I just hadn't hit record yet. Basically what's happened here is the uh, government pension investment fund you can see right here from Japan. They made a record cut to uh, how much exposure they have to U.S. Treasuries in this pension fund. Uh, they used to uh, have it at 47% of their allocation was in U.S. Treasuries. They cut that to 35%. And uh, you can see it's, the, it's Japan. It's the world's biggest pension fund. Now, this is one more step in something I've been highlighting every time something like this happens for months and years now, actually. But the uh, the world is de-dollarizing. That's just a fact. It's what's happening. Um, and uh, the first step in dumping dollars is getting rid of treasuries. Because basically, a treasury is just a dollar that pays interest. Because obviously, a dollar isn't going to pay any, any, any interest. And so, uh, the treasury is the dollar that pays you some interest. Um, and uh, the reason why the world is de-dollarizing really kind of, go it goes back for, you know, uh, uh, goes back a lot further than this, but the, one of the turning points was the great financial crisis, you know, 12, 13 years ago. Basically what happened was the, uh, after everything blew up from the housing market and our financial system started to collapse here in America, uh, started to roll over and was, had the potential to take out the global financial system. And so the rest of the world basically said, Hey, us, you got to take care of this figure it out. And, um, and so we said, okay, well, we have to, you know, issue a ton of debt in order to do that. Cause we have to, you know, buy up all these toxic assets to bail out the financial system. The world said, do it. We'll, uh, we'll lend you the money. So Right now, a lot of the debt that the United States creates goes to the Federal Reserve's balance sheet. Uh, but uh, when when this initially happened, a lot of that debt was basically came from around the world, central banks, sovereign wealth funds, things like that, all around the world. And uh, when this uh, when this happened, they be, so that's basically loaning the money to the United States to help bail out the financial system and stop the spread. And the promise was at that time that it would be temporary, right? There's nothing as permanent as a temporary government plan. But essentially what was uh, going on there was they promised it would be temporary. They said, we're gonna borrow all this, buy up all this debt, and then we're gonna slowly release these toxic assets back and we're gonna unwind all that easing. We're gonna tighten back up again, reduce the amount of money in the system. That's quantitative tightening. Um, and uh, we'll do that in order to uh, make this temporary so that the current loss in purchasing power of those dollars doesn't uh, exist into perpetuity. So the, the rest of the world said, great, we like that plan, let's do it. And uh, they kept on delaying and delaying and delaying. And then eventually when they did try and tighten, uh, it almost collapsed the financial system again, took out markets. And uh, that was in 2018, they reversed course, never were able to kind of go back. And at that point, the world really realized this is not temporary. They can never go back. Not only can the United States not... Um, uh, reduce and tighten and go back, but the United States can't even stop the easing. Um, and that's kind of how it works. Once an economy or a system gets addicted to that easy money, to the expansion of the money supply, that increase in uh, cheaper and cheaper debt, uh, even putting a stop to it, let alone reversing it, um, has uh, drastic negative effects because you start to see all, it's kind of like a, like a river flowing. You put up a dam because maybe the river got a little bit too high. You don't want the flooding downstream. So you put up a dam, but eventually there's more water. And so you have to build the dam higher and higher and higher and higher until eventually the dam breaks and everything, you know, there's a, a big, uh, you know, uh, landscape altering type of flood. Um, 
And uh, and so what happened ever since then, really in 2018, the world has been uh, de-dollarizing a lot more than they were before and slowly unloading treasuries, slowly unloading dollars. And we've seen this from China. We've seen this from Russia, especially I highlighted in a video a couple weeks ago or a couple months ago that Russia uh, reduced drastically their exposure to U.S. treasuries. And then like a week after that, with part of their wealth fund, uh, they completely de-dollarized 100%. Now that event itself didn't have a net effect on their total dollar exposure because it was absorbed by their central bank. Um, they just swapped assets basically from one account to another. Uh, but essentially we're seeing stuff like this happen more and more where, you know, even Japan, I didn't expect to see this from Japan, but Japan is uh, de-dollarizing. And the way that why I keep on saying that, that the world is dumping dollars here, even though they're just dumping treasuries, is because this is, you know, one step along this path. Because if you don't want dollars that pay you interest you don't want dollars that don't pay you interest and a treasury is just a dollar that pays you interest and so um we're we're uh we're seeing this slowly take place and i say slowly because this is slow and methodical nobody wants to be the one to, that just dumps all the dollars like we've heard about china doing the nuclear option nobody wants to do that because this the moment you start dumping treasuries that fast um, the price of treasuries drops dramatically because you're introducing a lot of volume onto the market that that market can't support. And if you do that, then everybody else has to start selling at the same time. Nobody wants to be the one to start that avalanche because uh, uh, basically it hurts everybody else and it hurts yourself because you can't unload everything before the price starts to drop from your initial uh, sales. And, um, uh, and so everybody's going slow here. So that's why we're seeing, you know, this is a record going Japan going from 47 to 35%. Uh, but it's not it's not a nuclear option. It's not anything massive. Um, but what happens next? What happens after you've unloaded some of your treasuries after you've unloaded all of your treasuries? Uh, well, what are you left with? Well, you're left with dollars, right? Because uh, in the event, you know, this is a long-term thing, but as everybody's getting rid of treasuries, eventually what you're left with um, is, uh, you know, you could be left with other people's currencies, you could be left with other people's debt, but if everybody's getting rid of treasuries, then the only person who's buying the treasuries is the Federal Reserve, right? Because, or, you know, the United States, but essentially either way, that money is coming from the United States, that's dollars. And so if everybody's getting rid of treasuries, the only people who are not are coming from somebody who's buying them with dollars. So that means when you dump treasuries, you get dollars uh, on net globally. And uh, if you're left with dollars, remember dollars or tre treasuries are just dollars that pay interest. So now you're left with dollars that don't pay interest. And we've seen uh, with the official numbers, the official inflation numbers, treasuries are paying a negative rate right now. That means dollars that don't pay you a nominal interest rate are even steeper negative because the United States can't stop printing. Um, that means that the uh, the next step is to get rid of those dollars. Well, if everybody's getting rid of treasuries, that means everybody's also getting rid of dollars. So you have to sell your dollars for something that somebody's willing to pay you for those dollars. So you're not going to be able to go to Germany. You're not going to be able to go to China. You're not going to be able to go to Japan. You're not going to be able to go to Russia because if everybody's trying to get rid of dollars, nobody's going to give you copper for dollars. Nobody's going to give you oil for dollars. Nobody's going to give you gold for dollars if everybody's trying to give you dollars. So the only people that are going to give you something anything for dollars is people who are required to by law or have an incentive to do so. So the Federal Reserve and anything that's priced in dollars still, which is U.S. denominated products and assets. Um, and so the Federal Reserve uh, will initially absorb the treasuries and then all those dollars will come back to the United States to buy things that are denominated in U.S. dollars. So the first place that'll be is U.S. assets, right? Because uh, there's a potential for a return, right? So that's a, a little bit of a smarter thing to do. Um, instead of buying, you know, uh, consumer materials, consumer goods, first you're going to try and buy stocks or you're going to try and buy corporate uh, bonds or you're going to try and buy uh, commodities, things like that. And so that money is going to come rushing back to buy all of all of our assets, real estate. There was an article recently that China, they kind of took the uh, year off from buying uh, U.S. real estate during COVID, but now that money is starting to flow right back in. And so as the world de-dollarizes, that's part of what that looks like is dump treasuries and then buy dollar denominated assets uh, because that's better than holding on to dollars. And quite frankly, as the world is doing this, that's the only place you can dump dollars is into U.S. asset markets. Um, 
and then you just get an asset instead that eventually at some point in the future will just be repriced in a different currency uh, at, at the failure of whatever currency it's currently priced in, which right now is the dollar. And so, uh, but once U.S. stocks, once uh, real estate, once uh, bonds, once everything gets priced to the point where the only potential return is negative or no return, then you start seeing all those uh, dollars flood into uh, buying just the stuff that we've imported for years, the stuff that the rest of the world made and sent to us. Now they're sending, do they're going to start sending dollars back uh, to buy the, all that stuff. And uh, that stuff that's from our grocery store shelves, from our inventory warehouse shelves, that's, uh, you know, commodities, that's all of our stuff. Um, that's the, the only stuff in the world uh, that you could exchange for dollars because we're the only ones that still have to do uh, uh, do commerce and trade in dollars. And so um, that's part of the reason why we haven't seen a lot of the inflation that many people have predicted over the last decade is because we have the unique position of being able to export those dollars overseas with a global reserve currency. Um, and uh, at some point that flow reverses and those dollars come back home and then we experience all of that pent-up inflation that was just held at you know buffered out of the system because uh, those dollars were still overseas eventually though with the abuse of the system that has to reverse and I'm not, this isn't a doomsday scenario. I'm not saying this is something that happens all at once or happens, uh, you know, you know, it, it's going to happen within the next six months or year or anything like that. This is a very slow process. And we can see that because Japan's pension fund went from 47 to 35 with treasuries globally in the global financial system. That's not a big move. But you start to see little moves like this all over the place that slowly happen. And eventually, uh, what I've just described throughout this whole video takes place. Um, it's possible it happens all at once, just not very likely because nobody wants to be the first one to take that step to trigger that to happen because it'll most likely hurt them more than it will help them. Maybe not in the long run, but at least initially. So uh, that is uh, that is the information uh, that is uh, kind of... Uh, uh, not really being covered that much. I'm, you know, Bloomberg wrote this article on it, but essentially uh, the world is de-dollarizing and now Japan is too. I was surprised to see it from Japan because you expect to see it from China, Russia, places like that. But Japan now slowly starting to de-dollarize as well. So as always, really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.